Chapter 9 After the high diviner Leibonis' need of her assistance was at its end, Aferne was granted leave. She made it through the hustle and bustle of nightlife. She reached her first key turn and pivoted onto more familiar but less traveled paths. Once she felt she was out of the sight of prying eyes, she quickened her pace. She had to. For what she and her collaborators and the Freedomist tribe feared most was just over the horizon. Aferne just witnessed what could very well be the absolute end to an uprising that hasn't even begun to start. But the signs were clear. High Diviner Sita, as she has done time and time before, as did the High Diviner Yezari, before her had done since the construction of the doorway. They opened up mystical breaches, pathways to the other worlds, those mirrored worlds that were discovered so long ago, when the heart of Anamdi was first lost during the ritual of transference. And as it has been since the beginning, a breach was opened, and a pair of Krokoda were set loose to search for the sacred jewel, the heart of Anamdi, that archaic symbol of Moja, to so many it is the symbol of cultural truth and ancestral virtue. But, to a growing few, has been nothing more but the key instrument of oppression and despair. And it has been found. The heart of Anamdi has been found. Aferne was certain of it. Caught your children home, Master Trainer. As commanded, Mamuk stepped forward. He firmly placed two fingers to his carotid artery and began his summoning call. It started as a low hum, but quickly scaled up to a sound that made the ears of his crocota twitch, but was unheard by Sita or Ferne. Far off in the distance of the now open doorway, the sound of a rapid gallop grew. A moment or two later, another set of mummocks beloved Krakota, burst through one after the other. Their run ceased and they walked slowly to their marty with their heads lowered. Mamuk acknowledged them with a grunt and they took their place on his vacant side. Meanwhile, Sita and Aferne began the soulful chant needed to open yet another breach. As before, a way to another world much like their own was obtained. And that's when everything changed from all prior times. All four of the beasts began to vibrate heavy with their hellish growl. Their ears perked up, and they all stood at attention. Mamuk raised his hands slightly, causing the beast to heal. They sent something beyond the doorway, Sita. Mamak said through a grin. Sita looked at the Krokota with studying eyes. It appears that they do, she agreed. But there is only one way to be certain. Send them forth. Mamak stood and faced the Krokota with a jerk of his head and a click from his jowl. The two returning beasts moved to the back of the chamber and sat. Mamak then stood between the two beasts that were tasked for the next run and spoke to them in the tongue of the trainers. That translates to, Go, my lovelies, fetch! Then, with the slightest motion of his hands, the command to go was given, and they were off. It all happened so fast that Ferne almost lost her opportunity to act. Her sole purpose for taking on this apprenticeship the very reason for her being here. This was her moment. So just before the Krakota burst through the breach, she flicked a pea-sized device into the breach that would disrupt its mystical flow. It would not stop the beasts from reaching the other world, but it would delay them greatly. How long? She wasn't sure. But enough, certainly, for her to reach her destination. So... She could inform the elders of the Freedomist tribe, giving them time to devise a plan and then execute it. Aferne stopped on the path and looked around, making sure she was not being followed or watched. 
she walked up to an unsuspecting tree and slid a section of bark to the side. She then placed her palm to the exposed area, which in turn released a latch just beneath the surface of the ground. A hidden door retracted, revealing a stairway just to the right of the tree. And after another quick look, she began her descent. Once she reached the final step, she slapped a panel closing the door. She sprinted down the long corridor to the open chamber. All eyes fell on her when she burst through the doorway, and the expression on every face present was the same after she spoke. They found it! They found the heart of Anamdi! To be continued.